To the bright lights of Hollywood, physician, humanitarian, and Oscar winner Dr. Hang Noor is remembered 20 years after his murder here in L.A. Fans' love for actors runs deep, but sadly, fame can attract dark intentions. While many wish the best for their idols, some harbor sinister desires, and many see through to those heinous intentions. Celebrity murders make headlines from time to time, and for fans who look up to them, their death hurts deeply. They mourn not only the loss of their beloved celebrities, but also the horrifying circumstances of their deaths. Stay tuned as this video explores the lives of actors who met tragic ends at the hands of others. Number 8. Lana Clarkson Lana Clarkson was widely celebrated for her captivating performances on both the big and small screens. She had a radiant smile and an undeniable talent, which often left audiences enchanted. Unfortunately, this well-known actress tragically lost her life in 2003 when music producer Phil Spector shot her inside his Los Angeles mansion. Initially, Spector claimed Clarkson's death was an accident, but evidence showed otherwise leading to his conviction for her murder. The incident occurred after Lana Clarkson refused Spectre access to a VIP area at a nightclub where she worked. But before we run ahead of ourselves, let's return to how it all started. It all started when Lana became interested in acting at a very young age. She never outgrew that childhood flair. By her late teenage years, she had already started snagging roles in television shows and movies. And soon, in the early 1980s, she started landing major roles like Queen Amethia in the 1985 fantasy film Barbarian Queen. But it all didn't last. Slowly, gigs stopped coming, and she had to find a new source of income. She started to strip. At the House of Blues, where she stripped, was where she met Phil Spector. When Phil Spector first encountered Lana Clarkson at the House of Blues in February 2003, she was unaware of his identity and mistook him for a woman. She was instructed to treat him with utmost respect only after her employers clarified his VIP status. Despite Clarkson's initial misunderstanding, Spectre convinced her to join him for a drink at his home by the end of her shift. Sadly, this decision would ultimately lead to her untimely death just hours later. Phil Spector's limo driver heard a gunshot while waiting outside Spector's mansion and called 911, ultimately leading to Spector's arrest. Upon entering the mansion, law enforcement officials were met with the grim sight of Lana Clarkson's lifeless body, found sprawled on a faux Louis XIV chair, as reported. The gruesome scene revealed that the lower portion of her mouth had been obliterated, with blood splattered across her face and neck. Adding to the macabre tableau, a .36 Colt gun was discovered beneath her leg. Despite Phil Spector's claims of Clarkson's suicide, forensic evidence and witness testimony disproved his defense, resulting in his conviction and imprisonment. After a lengthy trial and retrial, Phil Spector was found guilty of using a gun in the crime and he was sent to prison on May 29, 2009, for 19 years to life. Number 7. Dr. Hang S. Ngor Dr. Hang S. Ngor's story is about a man who had been through the flames and the fire, yet emerged as a symbol of resilience and courage. His portrayal of Dith Pran in The Killing Fields immortalized his survival story, but tragically his own life ended in an unsolved act of violence. Born in Cambodia on March 22, 1940, growing up, Dr. Hang S. Ngor's initial dream was to help heal people. So he ventured into the world of medicine, specializing in obstetrics and gynecology. Soon, his life blossomed in the capital of Phnom Penh as he became a devoted husband, soon to be father and doctor. But all crumbled before his eyes in 1975 when the Khmer Rouge overthrew Cambodia. Ngor was forced into a labor camp with his pregnant wife, who later died with the unborn child. He faced starvation and torture while in the concentration camp and had to conceal his identity as a medical practitioner to avoid being killed because of the hatred towards intellectuals. Finally, in 1979, the Khmer Rouge regime was overthrown, and Ngor managed to escape Cambodia, surviving the genocide that claimed the lives of an estimated 1.5 to 2 million Cambodians. 
He eventually resettled in Los Angeles, United States in 1980, where he got a job as a refugee counselor. While diligently healing and living, he encountered Pat Golden at a wedding in California. Golden, a casting director for a film about the Cambodian genocide, convinced Ngor to portray Dith Pran, a journalist who survived the Khmer Rouge era. Despite lacking acting experience, starred in the film The Killing Fields. He remarkably nailed the role and won an Academy Award for his performance, becoming the first Asian American to triumph in the category. That success made him a household name in the entertainment industry. After The Killing Fields, Ingor took on diverse roles in projects like The Vanishing Sun miniseries, Oliver Stone's Heaven and Earth, Eastern Condors, The Iron Triangle, China Beach, and Miami Vice. Another memorable role was in My Life, 1993, directed by Bruce Joel Rubin, where he played the spiritual healer, Mr. Ho. Sadly, on February 25, 1996, Hying S. Ngor encountered death in the most unkind way when he was gunned down by three teenagers outside his Los Angeles home. Initially deemed a robbery gone wrong, doubts arose about this explanation over time. The teenagers didn't take his car or the $3,700 cash he had, raising suspicions about the motive for the attack. According to his niece, she feared it might be the remnants of the political enemy who ended Ngor's life because he often spoke freely about Cambodia, although it came from a place of care. What do you think truly happened? Number 6. Johnny Lewis Can we conclude Johnny Lewis's death as a murder or suicide? I'll leave that for you in the comments for you to decide. Johnny Lewis's life story was a sad story of an extraordinarily talented man who had the world at his feet but had deeper issues that were tugging at his feet. Born as Jonathan Kendrick Lewis, Johnny K. Lewis was a promising American actor in both television and film. He gained recognition for his role as Kip Hafsack Epps in the initial two seasons of the FX series Sons of Anarchy. For him, the journey into acting began when he was 18 years old. Following his high school graduation, he departed from his Scientology upbringing to pursue his dream in the entertainment industry. However, before he left home, he had already appeared as a guest in an American drama television series called Boston Public. Lewis started appearing on TV in his late teens like in The Guardian and American Dreams. He was in movies too like Raise Your Voice and Underclassmen. On Fox, he played Pierce Chase in Quintuplets and appeared on The O.C. as Chili. He was also in Smallville. Lewis starred in Magic Valley and became famous as Half Sack in Sons of Anarchy. Although he had been having relationship issues, everything was going quite all right for him. Until one day in 2011, he had an accident that almost ended his life. On October 30th, 2011, Johnny Lewis sustained severe head injuries in a high-speed motorcycle crash. Although doctors recommended an MRI scan, he declined. As a result of this head trauma, Johnny started behaving oddly, irrationally, and suspiciously. To make things worse, his behavior was compounded by his legal troubles, leading to his time in a rehabilitation center. The first display of strange and violent actions after the accident occurred on February 10, 2012, in Los Angeles, when Johnny allegedly assaulted Shirley Wendell. He was let out on a $20,000 bail and rearrested two days later for assault and resisting arrest in this same case. He continued being arrested and appearing in and out of court throughout the year, until September 26, 2012. Johnny Lewis attacked and killed Catherine Davis and her cat in her home in Los Angeles. A few minutes after doing the ungodly act, he was found dead in her driveway. It is believed that he fell to his death, although there isn't any evidence that supports that claim, nor is there any evidence that confirmed that he was also pushed. An autopsy report noted that Lewis had nail marks on both sides of his neck when he died and had suffered partial strangulation. His death was ruled accidental because there was no evidence he attempted to kill himself or that he had been pushed. Police believe Lewis fell while trying to flee Davis's home after killing her. Number five. Thomas Jefferson Bird. Thomas Jefferson Bird has been a fast-rising name in the black community of Hollywood since the 90s. 
His murder was one of the heartbreaking incidents that fans in Hollywood had to grapple with recently. Born on July 25, 1950, Thomas Bird's life story remained shrouded in mystery until his untimely demise on October 3, 2020. While the details of his life journey were largely unknown to many, one undeniable truth emerged after his passing. He was widely regarded as a man of exceptional character, known for his innate kindness and gentle spirit. Despite the lack of extensive documentation about his life, the profound impact he had on those who knew him spoke volumes about his remarkable qualities and the legacy he left behind. Thomas Byrd, an alumnus of Morris Brown College, embarked on a multifaceted career path that encompassed education, acting, and stage performance. After graduation, he dedicated himself to teaching elementary school in Atlanta while pursuing his passion for the arts. Thomas Byrd's talent as an actor was recognized by acclaimed directors such as Spike Lee and Kenny Leon, leading to opportunities in both television and film. Among his most notable achievements was his Tony nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Play in 2003, earned for his stellar performance in August Wilson's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom on Broadway. When I got there, they began to say. That same year, he also won a Theatre World Award for that same role. Through his diverse array of roles and contributions in acclaimed movies like Bamboozled, Red Hook Summer, and the Netflix series She's Gotta Have It, Thomas Byrd left an indelible mark on the world of theatre and beyond. On the night of October 3, 2020, 70-year-old Thomas Byrd had a brief altercation with an unknown man at a store where he went to either purchase a few things or meet up with someone there. He drove to his home in southwest Atlanta until an emergency call was placed at approximately 1.45 a.m. Responders arrived to find Thomas Byrd unresponsive, having sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his back. Despite efforts to revive him, Byrd was tragically pronounced dead at the scene. Following the tragic incident, authorities swiftly charged Antonio Dimitris Rines, a resident of Atlanta, with felony murder in connection to the case. As the investigation unfolds, law enforcement officials are actively probing the nature of the relationship between the deceased actor and the accused perpetrator, seeking to shed light on the circumstances surrounding this devastating event. Number 4. George Reeves George Reeves, immortalized as the original Superman on television, soared into the hearts of millions with his iconic portrayal of the Man of Steel. However, behind the cape and the heroic facade lay a story marked by tragedy and mystery. George Reeves's life came to a shocking and untimely end, leaving behind a legacy that continues to captivate audiences and fuel speculation to this day. Born George Kiefer Brewer on January 5, 1914 in Woolstock, Iowa, George found his calling in acting at an early age. After serving in World War II, he pursued a career in Hollywood where he quickly rose to prominence with roles in films such as Gone with the Wind and From Here to Eternity. However, it was his portrayal of Superman in the 1950s television series Adventures of Superman that cemented his place in history and in our minds. Despite his on-screen success, Reeves' personal life was full of turmoil. His relationship with actress Leonore Lemon was chaotic and he struggled with the pressures of fame and typecasting. Friends and colleagues described him as a kind and generous soul, but behind closed doors, he battled inner demons and a sense of disillusionment with his career. On the night of June 16, 1959, Reeves's life took a tragic turn when he was found dead in his home in Beverly Hills, California, from a gunshot wound to the head. Officially ruled a suicide, Reeves's death sent shockwaves through Hollywood and sparked intense speculation and conspiracy theories. Many questioned the official ruling, pointing to inconsistencies in the evidence and the lack of a clear motive for suicide. Reeves' fiancée, Leonore Lemon, and his close friend, Tony Mannix, the wife of MGM studio executive Eddie Mannix, were both present at the time of his death, leading to rumors of foul play and a possible cover-up. Theories abound regarding the circumstances surrounding Reeves's demise. Some believe he was murdered as part of a conspiracy orchestrated by powerful figures in the entertainment industry. 
While others speculate that he may have accidentally shot himself or fallen victim to a botched robbery attempt. Despite numerous investigations and inquiries over the years, the truth behind Reeves' death remains elusive, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Regardless of the circumstances, Reeves' passing left an indelible mark on Hollywood and the collective consciousness of his fans. His portrayal of Superman continues to inspire generations of viewers, while his tragic fate serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of fame and the darker side of show business. In the end, George Reeves remains an enigmatic figure, remembered not only for his iconic role as the Man of Steel, but also for the enduring mystery surrounding his death. As long as the truth remains elusive, his story will continue to fascinate and haunt those who seek to unravel the secrets of Hollywood's golden age. Number 3. Carl Switzer Best known as Alfalfa, the freckle-faced boy in the 1935 television series Our Gang, Carl Switzer, had been a screen god from the little age of six. He had his whole life ahead of him, and he actively walked in the fruitful path that destiny had laid ahead of him. But it all unexpectedly turned blank with one shot of a bullet. Carl Switzer was an American child actor, singer, guide, and dog breeder born into a supportive family environment. His journey into the world of entertainment began at the age of six when he and his parents took an impromptu trip to the Hal Roach Studios cafeteria with his elder brother, Harold. Their spontaneous performance caught the attention of talent scouts, which eventually led to their signing to appear on the popular short, Our Gang. Soon, Carl proved that maybe some people were born stars because in no time, he soon amassed fame for his splendid role in the short series. Although he nailed his role on screen and was beloved for that, he was a meanie behind the scenes and made cruel jokes at other kids on set. But what initially appeared as mere childish behavior gradually evolved into a pattern that ultimately led to his downfall as he matured. At 12 years old, Carl Switzer left the Our Gang series. In no time, he was able to land a few other television shows and films, but it wasn't as easy as he expected. By 1954, at the age of 27, Carl met Diana Collingwood on a blind date. Just three months later, they tied the knot in matrimony. Their union proved fruitful, and they were blessed with a son together. Despite their initial happiness and the birth of their son, their relationship eventually succumbed to irreconcilable differences, resulting in their decision to part ways three years later. After the divorce, Carl's life soon took a negative turn. The trajectory of Carl Switzer's life seemed to be marked by a series of tragedies, each one foreboding the eventual and abrupt end that awaited him. A year after parting ways with his wife and his child, he was unexpectedly shot by an unknown gunman in January 1958. It wasn't fatal, as it only hit the arm. Carl Switzer survived that, and to date, the assailant wasn't identified. However, the next bullet Carl Switzer was going to receive in January of the following year was going to be the end of him. Months before he was murdered, Carl seemed pretty low on money. The last acting gig he took was the year before, so he engaged in his other side business, dog training. Carl's friend and business partner, Moses Stilts, hired him to help train his dog, which eventually went missing under Carl Switzer's care. Stilts was infuriated and demanded that Carl either return his dog or pay an amount equivalent to the value of the dog. Carl Switzer took action by putting up ads offering a reward for its return. Fortunately, the dog was found, and the person who brought him back received $1.35 in cash and $1.15 worth of alcoholic beverages, which was a significant sum at the time. However, Switzer began to regret the $1.50 he had given away and felt that Moses Stilts should repay him. Carl Switzer and a photographer friend, Jack Plott, went to confront Moses Stilts at his home. Unfortunately, the encounter turned violent, and according to Tom Corrigan, the stepson of Moses Stilts, his stepfather shot Switzer as he was leaving the house. Despite Tom Corrigan's testimony, which was not allowed in court, Moses Stiltz's claim of self-defense was accepted. Tragically, Carl Switzer's death received little media attention as it coincided with the passing of the famous Cecile B. DeMille, whose news coverage dominated the headlines. Number 2. Dorothy Stratton 
Next on the list is Dorothy Stratton. Her story is that of a rising star whose life was cut short by a shocking act of violence. Dorothy grew up as a beautiful blonde girl in Vancouver, Canada, living her life like anyone her young age would have. One day, a 17-year-old Dorothy, who was busy serving ice cream where she worked, crossed paths with Paul Snyder in 1977. This pivotal encounter would forever change the trajectory of her life. Paul Snyder was then a 26-year-old club promoter and pimp in Vancouver. He lived large and had the demeanor of a man with a soft life. For a minor like Dorothy, who probably has not had that type of older man try to befriend her, it was easy for Snyder to develop a brief friendship with young Dorothy and soon became romantically involved with her. It was obvious that whatever feelings he had for her wasn't love. In no time, he persuaded naive Dorothy to take off her clothes to take nude photos of her for a magazine entry and convince her mother to sign a model release form, which Dorothy's mother unwisely did. The magazine promptly invited her to visit Los Angeles because she was successfully selected as a model with the magazine. In the summer of 1978, Dorothy Stratton embarked on two first-time experiences, flying in a plane and riding in a limousine. The reality awaiting her was far from glamorous. She kept doing nude shoots and soon slowly transitioned into acting. In October 1978, Paul joined Dorothy in Los Angeles, and in June of the following year, 1979, Paul and Dorothy got married. Her transition to Hollywood was going great as she spent more of her time filming. Dorothy Stratton was featured in television series like Fantasy Island and Americathon, just to mention a few. While her life bloomed, Paul Snyder assumed the role of his wife's chauffeur, manager, and acting coach, but his constant presence and arguments with Dorothy caused her immense stress as noted by colleagues. In fact, her friends did not approve of him. In no time, Dorothy started having an affair and soon suggested a divorce. While she worked towards getting a divorce, Paul wasn't pleased about her leaving him for another man. So he took matters into his own hands. On August 14, 1980, tragedy struck. Dorothy's lifeless body was discovered in Paul's home. He had murdered her with one bullet from his shotgun when she came to see him concerning his payment from the annulment of their marriage. Unfortunately, Paul Snyder couldn't be prosecuted because an hour after he killed Dorothy, he killed himself. Number 1. Sharon Tate Few celebrity murder stories are as haunting and tragic as that of Sharon Tate. She was a rising starlet on the brink of stardom, and unfortunately, her life was brutally cut short in one of the most infamous and chilling murders of the 20th century. Her untimely death not only shocked the world, but also left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness, forever altering the entirety of Hollywood and the lives of those who knew her. Born in Dallas, Texas in 1943, Sharon Tate was destined for greatness from an early age. Blessed with beauty, talent, and charisma, she quickly made a name for herself in the competitive world of show business. After making her film debut in the 1966 occult-themed movie Eye of the Devil, Sharon Tate's star began to rise, and she soon caught the attention of directors and audiences alike. She was known as a hard worker. However, her marriage to acclaimed director Roman Polanski thrust her into the spotlight and solidified her status as one of Hollywood's brightest stars. The couple's whirlwind romance captivated the media, promising a future filled with love, success, and happiness. Tragically, that future was shattered on the night of August 9, 1969, when she was killed. It was recorded that members of the Manson family, a cult led by the deranged Charles Manson, brutally murdered Sharon Tate and several others at her Los Angeles home. Pregnant at the time of her death, her life was cruelly taken just as her career was reaching new heights, leaving behind a legacy tainted with sorrow and unfulfilled potential. The shock and horror of Sharon Tate's murder spread across the world, sending waves of fear and disbelief through the entertainment industry and beyond. The senselessness of the crime, coupled with the brutality of the attacks, left an indelible scar on the collective memory of all forever changing the way people viewed fame, celebrity, and the dark underbelly of Hollywood. In the aftermath of Tate's death, the trial of Charles Manson and his followers became a media sensation, 
captivating audiences with its lurid details and shocking revelations. The Manson family's warped ideology and cult-like devotion to their leader became the stuff of nightmares, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked fanaticism and the allure of charismatic but dangerous figures. Despite the passage of time, Sharon Tate's memory endures, her image frozen in time as a symbol of innocence lost and dreams unfulfilled. Her tragic fate serves as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the dark forces that lurk beneath the surface of society. But beyond the tragedy of her death, Sharon Tate is also remembered for the vibrant spirit and infectious energy she brought to every role she played. Whether she's portraying a wide-eyed ingenue or a complex femme fatale, Sharon Tate's performances were filled with a rare and authentic depth, captivating audiences and earning her the admiration of critics and peers alike. Ultimately, Sharon Tate's legacy is one of resilience and strength. Though her life was cut short in the most brutal of circumstances, her memory lives on in the hearts of those who knew her and the countless fans who continue to be inspired by her talent, grace, and unwavering spirit. Thanks for watching. To enjoy more thrilling stories that uncover the reality of your favorites, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.